Hello, I'm Jim and you're watching Race Day. Uh, today I want to talk about heart rate zones and in particular heart rate zones on a Garmin watch. I'm guessing if you're watching this then you're familiar with heart rate zones within a Garmin. Uh, they have five heart rate zones going from easy through to maximum and personally I use these in my training to get some idea of how hard I'm pushing myself to make sure that when I'm doing an easy run, it is easy to make sure when I'm doing a hard run, it's hard, uh, as simple as that. But uh, one thing that I noticed this year training was, are my heart rate zones actually correct? So the Garmin, uh, as a default, works out your heart rate zones based on percentages. I have all the information here. So we have heart rate one, which is warm up, which is anything under 60% of maximum heart rate. Uh, easy heart rate zone, which it, it has a 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. Uh, zone three, which is aerobic, that is 70 to 80% of your maximum heart rate threshold running which is zone four and that is 80 to 90 percent of your maximum heart rate and then zone five maximum is something that you're not going to be able to maintain for very long at all and that is 90 to 100 percent of maximum heart rate um i guess that your garment has a good idea of what your maximum heart rate is by tracking all your activities and it automatically works out those heart rate zones i have noticed them move around slightly uh, but this summer um doing some harder sessions, I noticed that the Garmin had me in threshold for a long time. So there was a, a two uh, hour marathon pace run, which I did, uh, where I was in threshold for two hours. And uh, as far as I know, that shouldn't really be possible to, to hold that kind of heart rate uh, for such a, a length of time, maybe according to what I'd read from Garmin. So my first stop was really to think, are the figures that I'm getting from my Garmin accurate? So on the back of my lovely new Phoenix 8 here, I have heart rate monitor, um, but uh, risk-based heart rate monitors are known to not be 100% accurate. And I mean, it's fair enough, really, it is a, a tiny piece of kit. Uh, so. My first stop was Amazon, got a heart rate monitor, uh, a heart rate monitor strap. And I did find that the figures that I've been getting from my Garmin uh, on the, the wrist-based heart rate monitor compared to the, the strap uh, were different. There was maybe five to 10 beats there, which doesn't sound like a huge amount, but when looking at the uh, zones that Garmin has for me in threshold, that's 150 to 169 beats a minute. Um, so, you know, being out by 10 beats is quite a lot. Uh, so I tried playing around with the, the figures uh, to see if I could get something which felt uh, a bit better. Uh, but eventually I decided I was going to do a lab test, a lactate lab test to work out going into the Berlin Marathon, which I'm doing next weekend, uh, kind of what my guardrails were. So uh, what zones should I be running in? What should I not let my heart rate go above? What kind of pace can I expect to run? So I went to my local university here who do a VO2 test and a lactate test and uh, jumped on a treadmill for them. Uh, you basically start off at quite an easy pace uh, and uh, you've got uh, a mask on to uh, measure oxygen every, I think it was every two or three minutes, uh, I had to kind of jump to the side of the treadmill and they would take a blood sample to measure the, the blood lactate. And from that, they could come up with uh, more accurate zones, uh, which uh, annoyingly, there are four zones rather than five zones. But I think that's mainly because they put together zone one and two, the warm up and easy. So for me, anything under 147 beats a minute is uh, considered to be zone one or two. Uh, so that is like the, when I'm doing an easy run, I should be trying to make sure that I'm keeping my heart rate uh, under 147 
uh, comparing that to Garmin, uh, they had uh, heart rate zone 2 easy as being 112 beats a minute to 131 beats a minute. So, you know, massive difference there straight away between what Garmin thinks is an easy run for me um, what science is telling me with the, the kind of official test, the official science test. Uh, zone uh, 3 or aerobic on uh, the Garmin is 131 beats per minute to 150 beats per minute uh, as the kind of aerobic zone. Now comparing that to uh, the, the test in the lab, they have that for me as 147 to 166, so massively different. Uh, that's a really important zone for me because that is the zone that I need to stay in when I'm doing my marathon. Uh, so I know when I'm running that, that uh, I need to keep my heart rate over, sorry, under 166 beats a minute. And uh, you know, the, the person administering the test uh, said to keep an eye on that. That's a, a good indicator that uh, I'm running in a, a zone which is going to be uh, something that I can maintain. All other things being correct, you know, I've got to make sure that my fueling is right. Uh, he's basing this also on me telling him about my training running up to the marathon, that I've been going out there and doing 20 milers at marathon pace. So there's a certain level of confidence there that... Uh, my marathon pace is going to be something that my not just aerobic system but my muscles are going to be able to take so yeah 131 to 150 on garmin 147 to 166 according to the lab test so the lab test is telling me that i can do a lot more than the garmin thinks i can um then threshold pace the Garmin has that as 150 to 169, which is a lot closer to the uh, the zone two that the lab test told me. So uh, that is kind of a pace that I can maybe go into towards the end of the marathon, but if I go in too early, I'm not going to be able to maintain it and I'm going to fall apart. Uh, the lab test told me that that kind of level is 166 beats a minute plus. Um, so that is kind of a, a place that I, I don't want to be going into until, you know, maybe the final 5K. And then maximum, the uh, Garmin has that as 169 to 188. And the lab test just has that as 188. That's my VO2 max uh, heart rate. Um, I guess the other interesting thing about the lab test was that they told me paces that I can expect. So the zone two hard uh, kind of heart rate that I'm aiming for for my marathon should be between 720 and 625 pace. Um, the guy doing the test told me not to, to go beyond 625. I think it's safe to say that in a marathon I'm not going to, to be going past 625 unless I really want to blow up. Uh, but I just find this really interesting that uh, Garmin and data really that we, we get from our watches plays such a key role in running these days. Um, you know, we're, we're not so much running to feel anymore. We are running and checking our watches, seeing what zone we're in. Or I know I certainly am. And from my experience here, the data that I've been getting from my watch has not actually been that great. Um, so the the test that I did uh, was w well worth it, I, I think. <laughs> we'll see when I do my marathon next weekend. I guess the other thing is uh, my VO2 max, which I think is a bit of an ego thing, really. Uh, but my watch has my VO2 max as uh, 62. Uh, the, the test came out as 57. So, I, I mean, the uh, person administering the test did say to me that for a man of my age, just coming up on 50, uh, 62 would be extremely good. 57 is still good. 
Um, so, you know, there, there's another place where you've got that kind of VO2 max data on your watch and uh, it appears to have been quite far out for me. Though I will say I did the VO2 max test after I'd done the lactate test and I'd also done a, a hard session the day before. So, I don't know, I, like again, talking about ego, my ego likes to think that uh, my VO2 max is better than 57 just uh, I was a bit knackered by the time I got to that part of uh, the whole process. So, uh, do you use your uh, watch zones to calculate how fast you go in sessions? Uh, what do you think of them? Have you done a lab test? Interested to know in the comments what other people's experience is of this. Uh, it's been a really interesting process for me. I'm hoping that these guardrails that I've now got in place from doing the lab test help me in my marathon next weekend. We'll find out. Thanks for watching.